Hey everybody, my name's Ryan and here at eTrailer we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we could try to answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2020 Honda CRV. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness. So a lot of people use these CRVs to do a little bit of everything and I think it's really well known that these are great all-around vehicles. So with that being said, a lot of people not only use accessories, but they also do a little bit of towing as well. And that's where the wiring is going to come into play. You're gonna need it to transfer the lighting signals from the back of your Honda to the back of your trailer, keeping you safe and legal. And what's really nice about this kit is whenever you're not using the wiring, you're not even going to see it. It's not gonna take away from the looks of your Honda. But whenever you are ready to use it, it's gonna be super easy. If you open up our hatch, the wiring is actually going to be stored inside. So not only is it out of sight, but it's also out of the element. So it's going to stay protected. So if you open up our floor covering, you can see our wiring is going to be stored in the compartment down here. So whenever we're ready to hook up to our trailer, we can simply just drape our wiring over the threshold here and close the hatch on it. And that's perfectly acceptable. That's what the wiring is designed to do. I will say anywhere is fine other than the latch. You don't want to get it hung up in there because it could potentially get damaged. But once we have it draped over, we can close up our hatch. And plug into our trailer and with this kit too, it gives us a lot of length here, so we shouldn't have any issues plugging it in. So the connector here is gonna have a nice thick rubber dust cover, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about any corrosion or anything like that. I do suggest, especially if you use this a lot, just from time to time to apply some dielectric grease to those terminals. That way we can ensure these will stay in perfect shape. What's nice too about the dust cap, let's say if you drop your trailer, and you plan on coming back a couple hours later to pick it up, you can always just kind of wrap this around the hitch here and leave it temporarily stored like that. So really useful, especially if you have a bunch of stuff in the back of your car, you don't have to try to put it away just to have to pull it out a few hours later. So one thing I really do like about this kit is the fact that it uses a module box. And what that's gonna do is protect your Honda's factory wiring if a short or anything like that were to occur on the trailer side. So for me, that's really important. Really give me some peace of mind. These newer cars have really advanced electrical systems and you wouldn't want to do anything to jeopardize that. And with this kit and because of that module box, it's something you're not going to have to worry about. So one of the things a lot of customers ask about is locating the factory plug because this kit does utilize a connector that Honda already has back here, and it simply just plugs right into there. But it can be a little tricky to find. You don't have a ton of space. With that being said, that connector plug is located right here in this area, just behind the panel. And during the installation, I'll show you what panels I removed and how I took them off to get to that plug. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and do that together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the back of our CRV we're going to need to open up the rear hatch and what we're going to need to do is remove some panels that way we can locate our factory connector plug so first panel we're going to take out is this floor covering it's pretty straightforward and just lift up on it pull it out and set it off to the side then we're going to have to remove our threshold here so this is two different pieces we're going to have a small piece in the center and to remove it you can just kind of grab the bottom and pull, and that's gonna release these clips here. So we'll set that to the side. Then we can remove the actual large portion of the threshold as well. So again, same deal, just kind of grab one corner, pulling up, work it off and set it to the side. Then if you move up, we're gonna have this panel that runs across the top here we need to pull that off as well pretty much the same deal you can kind of just grab one corner of it and start to work it down 
Once we have it off, we'll set it to the side. So these are the fasteners that's holding this top panel in. If one of them falls out, not really a huge deal. You can simply just take it and slide it back into place. So then if we move in just a little bit, you can see right here on this flat portion of the panel, we're gonna have a cargo hook. And what you're gonna do, you need to pull this out. So you can open it up about halfway. And then on underneath it on the bottom side, if you take a flathead screwdriver, there's a white tab in there and you can just kind of push that down. And while you're pushing it down, you can pull that whole assembly out. So here's kind of a better look at that white tab. You can see it in there. You just push on on it and that's going to allow you to release it. And if you look on the driver's side, we're gonna have this handle here that folds our seats down. And if we kind of open that up, it's gonna be a small little cover behind it. And we can take a flathead screwdriver, kind of push down on it. And we'll flip it out of the way. And behind there, there's gonna be two Phillips head screws. So go ahead and pull those out. Now what we can do is pull these panels out a little bit and our connector plug that we're looking for should be located behind them. So what you can do is kind of just peel back this weather stripping some and take a trim tool or something similar and kind of start to pry behind the panels here. And we don't need to take these completely off we just need to free them up. That way we'll be able to kind of peel them back and locate our plug. So once this bottom portion of the panel is relatively loose, we're going to do the same thing for this upper portion. And our connector plug should be located behind it. And if you look through the opening where my tool is, you can see a connector plug with some brownish tape around it. That's going to be the connector plug that we need to plug our harness into. So what I'll do is cut this tape and be able to pull this plug out a little bit. That way it's easier to see and work with. So after removing that tape, it gave us a little bit of extra working room, but not too much. So it is a little tight back here, but that's okay. Once we have that done, we can take our new harness and one end of it is gonna match up with the plug. And so we're simply just going to plug those in together. Now that we have it plugged in, we can grab our included fuse and place it in the fuse holder. And close up our dust cover. And then what I'm gonna do is take our module box and secure it somewhere behind the panel here. That way it's not bouncing around when we're driving down the road. So I'll go ahead and do that now and then show you what it looks like once I have it done. So I went ahead and secured our module box and I just used a couple of zip ties and secured it to the body of our vehicle. And our four pole wiring actually just runs down. And you wanna make sure to push it out of the bottom side of this panel here. That way we can kind of store it back here by our spare tire whenever we're not using it. Now before we put everything back together, it's a good idea to check our wiring to make sure it's working properly. I do suggest using a little tester like this one here. You can find it here at eTrailer, and I say it because if something on your trailer is faulty, it may give you a false reading. With that being said, we'll hit our brakes. We'll turn on our running lights. We'll check our left turn signal, as well as our right turn signal. So now that we know our wiring works, we can start to reattach all of our panels 
and put everything back together the opposite way that we removed it. Whenever you kind of start doing the side panel, you want to make sure that the weather stripping isn't pinched behind there. You want it to sit on top. So what you can kind of do is kind of just use your hands to roll it back and work your way down the panel. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Curt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness on our 2020 Honda CRV.